the mushroom. How you doing? Welcome back. We got a dope guest today. His name is Hi Mike Z. Not Hi like saying hello. The other type of Hi. He is a influencer, a leader in the cannabis space of New York. He was and still is my coach for the last like seven years. He's taught me anything and everything. And now we get to delve into his life and hear more about him. So I'm pretty excited. Hi, Mike. Wait, hi. Hi, Mike Z. How you doing? Uh, tell us a little about yourself. What do you do? What is Hi, Mike Z? <laughs> hi, Jeremy. First of all, thank you for that extraordinary <laughs> intro. Um, I'm I'm Mike Z. Hi. Hi. Um, what do I do? I do a lot of things, man. Um, you know, a lot of my time these days is spent as academic director of business of cannabis degree programs at LIM College in Midtown Manhattan. Mm. Outside of that, I still dabble in coaching and which is really my first love and and my first business, which is working with brilliant entrepreneurs and leaders like yourself. Uh, I, I'm humbled to be able to support on their journeys and, and to learn from. I always say my, my greatest teachers are my students and my clients. Mm. And I certainly am inspired by the people that I work with like you, where, you know, I'll, I'll share a quick story, which is one of my biggest, I guess, accomplishments or things that I'm proud of is like with you, I've had a lot of my clients, I've helped them start meditating. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you meditate daily and have been pretty hardcore about it for years now. Definitely. And I fell off on my practice last year. And so this year I've been, I challenged myself to meditate daily like you. Oh, and that's awesome. I'm proud to say I'm, I'm so far, I've done every day this year and, and I love it. So thank you for inspiring me, brother. That's awesome. No, I, I definitely understand that. I am um, all the time, like students of mine, I used to be a college professor, uh, will say like, thank you for this. Thank you for that. And I go like, no, like, thank you for teaching me X, Y, Z. And they all think I'm like, just saying it to be nice. And it's like, no, you literally taught me something that I think about like every day, or like, uh, you just showed me the light of this or X, Y, Z. And it's, um, it's honest. It's like, you, the student is just as much the teacher as the teacher. Um, but back to your academia, sounds like that's a pretty important job high up. Why did they hire you to be uh, the head of a program? Like you obviously have to have some type of uh, something going on to be hired for that, right? <laughs> you would think so, right? But, <laughs> yeah, uh-oh. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, for about a decade now almost, which is crazy to think about, I've been... I guess I, I'd call myself like a grassroots community organizer in New York where I've- Pun intended together... with grass or? Oh, always. The puns are always <laughs> intended. I, I got into the cannabis space because of the puns. But, <laughs> um, so yeah, starting in about 2014, I started producing events and built a community called High NY. Mm. And- it was all about education and connecting people around cannabis. And so, you know, in addition to all that, I've, I've had the amazing opportunity to do a TEDx talk about cannabis. I've written a couple of books about cannabis. My latest one, the cannabis business book. Wow. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I, I like almost forgot the name of my book. Yeah, for a you second. almost that, messed that one up. <laughs> that, that's the kind of day it's been today, just so you yeah. know, but the cannabis business book available on Amazon and wherever books are sold. Yeah. Um, it's actually, I'm proud to say it's one of the best selling books on the topic of the business of cannabis in the world. That's um, awesome. so is it on audible yet? Can we hear it, you uh, read it? It is on audible. Yeah. Oh, so. I'm, I got to get that copy. I have the digital version. I got to get the audible version now too. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, so that's all available. So um, I think it's, partially because I've been committed to cannabis education for all these years and and have been especially in New York uh, at the forefront of it for a while since before it was cool since before it was legal mm -hmm. and you know I think people recognize that uh, I have a, a really sincere passion and commitment to doing this work 
And mm-hmm. quite frankly, even though sometimes it's frustrates me and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? I can't imagine doing anything else with my life. So I'm going to keep on doing this till the wheels fall off. That's awesome. I love it. Well, you are doing a good job steering the industry the right way. Mm-hmm. Although I will say, I'm, I don't know if I'm too pleased with how legalization has looked. Um, I feel like it's legal at, or at least medicinal in like 40 of the 50 states right now. But I would say 38 of them don't seem to be like uh, programs that I would put myself behind and support. Um, I feel like a lot of the states are restrictive and the people who end up getting to play are millionaires and like billionaires who already have plenty of money. Um, the the licenses to, to operate are just super expensive. A lot of the restrictions on quantity don't really make sense. They might've changed it, but in Pennsylvania, you could buy like 28 grams of flour in a day or 28 grams of concentrate. Those are way different things. Who's making this legislation? Because it doesn't make sense. I actually spoke to someone who was a uh, part of the legislation in Minnesota. He said when they were writing the legislation there, they did it as a joke because they didn't, the first time they like wrote it, they thought like, oh, it'll definitely get thrown back. And it got approved and they're like, no way. And supposedly in Minnesota, you can sell cannabis at like, anywhere that sells drinks or something. So like it's at gas stations, supermarkets, a bunch of places they didn't really want it to be at, but the people who made the rules didn't really know what they were doing when they made the rules. Um, New York, I do like that you can grow it. That's cool. But, uh, and I do like that they say they're trying to like give licenses to people in communities that have been hurt the most from the drug um, uh, war, but it still just seems very restrictive. I don't understand why we can't treat cannabis like we treat 99.9% of other plants like tomatoes and you can grow it in your house. You can grow as much as you want of it. Um, I don't really see the problem with that. What do you think about legalization, how it's gone, how it could be better or what's like good about it that maybe someone like me just doesn't understand? Well, I have to say, honestly, a lot of your criticisms and your perspective, I think it's pretty fair. You know, I, I wouldn't really argue or disagree with anything that you just put forth. Well, let's pretend. Sure. <laughs> I can, you said? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, but I, I can, but I won't because I, I agree with you largely. And, you know, truth be told, it's it's easy to sometimes get really frustrated and disillusioned with legalization and with the whole process. And, you know, when I got into this whole thing, I was extremely idealistic and I thought cannabis can and will save the world. And, you know, this is our opportunity to, you know, redefine capitalism and raise the consciousness of humanity and and reinstate a respect and harmony with nature that I think is so desperately needed. And unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of what I'll call human error that gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you gave a great example of, you know, when it comes to policy making, oftentimes you have people making the policy that don't really have a great deal of education or experience with the subject matter you know they're professional policy makers they're not cannabis professionals professional and... pot smokers <laughs> that's right that's, policy a, makers. That's, that's right like you and i yeah no one <laughs> but... hit me up <laughs> <laughs> exactly and even when they hit me up most of the time they just listen smile and nod and do whatever it's they formality do. it's yeah, to exactly. say that they hit you up but not to listen to you that's, you know, that that's certainly when Governor Cuomo was in office, that was certainly my experience mm-hmm. with, with his team. But, um, you know, I think that, you, you know, you, and again, I don't envy these policymakers. It's a hard job, but a, a lot of them, they're working on a dozen or more different issues and different legislation. And, you know, you even though for maybe people like you and me and and for a lot of people, this is like a huge important issue for them. It's like one of the hundred things that they need to do. So, you know, they try their best and then they're like, all right, whatever, you know, we'll see how it goes kind of thing. So 
I, I think, yes, there's certainly a lot that hasn't worked, right? Mm -hmm. We can look at any of the more mature markets like California, Washington, Oregon, where, you know, in some ways it's been a bloodbath for the people who have, you know, built and sustained the industry for many years, people who have relied on it for their livelihood. A lot of them are getting squeezed out and, and destroyed because they can't compete with institutional capital and the big corporations and the big players and, you know, all, all that stuff. And it's really unfortunate. It's really sad. And, and personally, I, I think it's unfair in a lot of ways. Um, you know, that being said, I think legalization is not all negative. And I, I think, you know, certainly seeing decriminalization occur, seeing people get out of jail, seeing the prices drop and making mm -hmm. cannabis medicine more accessible and affordable, seeing safety standards get implemented where, you know, there's going to be, I you know, less risk, hopefully, to more consumers going forward. And also one thing I'm extremely excited about, even though it's been kind of slow, is having research open up. You know, That's huge. Uh, yeah. we've seen the last few years, this always kind of never made sense to me. You know, we see psilocybin research, we see ketamine, we see MDMA research happening for therapeutic use and all this stuff. And to me, it's like they always skip cannabis. You yeah. know, like I feel like, cannabis therapy cannabis for trauma cannabis for mental well, it's health it's schedule one right but isn't psilocybin schedule one also so how do they get like by that you know it's a great question it's a great question i'm not sure i have an answer for you mm. um i think it has to do with you know with psilocybin ketamine mdma because they're a little simpler to synthesize and to mm. standardize than cannabis is, you know, that, that, right. that's but my, also, my opinion, I, but I don't I know. guess synth synthetic makes it easier to work with because like it can be legal if, if it's synthetic because uh, I'm just asking because um, what's called studying synthetic cannabis or studying synthetic psilocybin, uh, I don't think is the best because it's not like, it's not the same. I think uh, it's interesting I feel like psilocybin in a, in a lot of ways is where cannabis was in like the early 90s, at least where I was with cannabis in the early 90s, uh, seeing it on TV, whatever. But I didn't I didn't know anything about cannabinoids. I didn't know anything about terpenes, um, probably until I was like 22, 23 out of college. Even I don't think even in college I heard about terpenes or cannabinoids. And then like I was guilty of it as as an experienced pot smoker in college of like, no, I just want the highest THC, just want the highest THC, just want the highest THC. And it's like, no, I get higher now sometimes from cannabis that doesn't have higher THC because of the entourage effect of all these other terpenes and cannabinoids. Uh, and you're not going to learn about the entourage effect if you have a synthetic uh, THC, Delta 9, whatever it is, um, because it's not the same. So it's like, you need to study the actual natural compound organ plant whatever not just like the synthetics um and i it's awesome that mushrooms seem to be studied more than cannabis but um because like i i feel like from experience i know there's entourage effects with mushrooms like there is with cannabis i know it but i just uh there's no proof behind it and a lot of people will tell me like no that doesn't really that's probably like in your head but I, I did speak to one guy. I'll believe what he said because I, I um, had a couple of friends all have the same species of mushroom independently. Not They don't all know each other. And all of them, when they reported back to me, were like, it was religious. They all used the word religious. And I was like, yo, that's um really weird that like all of them use the word religious. And I mentioned this story to, uh, I think this guy's name is Reggie, the, the head of the psilocybin cup. And he actually said, like, yo, I have a very similar story. Gave the same species to, like, a bunch of people. They all reported back with very similar words. And they ended up getting lab work done on it. And there was um, some compound. I don't want to say, like, cannabis, something like a cannabinoid, whatever, 
that was higher in this mushroom. It didn't have higher psilocybin. It didn't have higher all the stuff that makes you trip, whatever. But it had higher of this compound. And that obviously affected these people's trips in a way. Um, so like, it's exciting that there's more uh, research going on, but it is interesting that it's not really with cannabis. Um, it's upsetting a little bit, or it doesn't really make sense. Well, I, I think, it, you know, these things take time. And, you know, the the mushroom legalization wave and, and some of these other substances have gone a lot faster than cannabis, I think partially because cannabis kind of laid not only some groundwork for it, but also, you know, a lot of the advocates behind the cannabis movement moved on to, you know, advocating for these other drugs or, or plant medicines or, or therapeutic modalities. But, you know, I think it's a matter of time. And, you know, unfortunately, the, these huge institutional changes take time. There's no other, you know, it's rare for these things to happen overnight as much as we would love for that to happen. Um, you know, there's a lot of complexity and moving parts and bureaucracy and all that stuff, but I say, fuck that. Can I get some <laughs> of those, those religious mushrooms from my local rabbi or what? what a... <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a species called Gandalf. I, um, and I'm a, a goal of mine is to try I've and actually get... tried that one. Oh, I yeah? Have that. yeah. 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 I actually, I met a friend of a friend in, when I was at the big weed conference in Vegas and he gave me just a little micro of it. And it was fantastic. It, I didn't have like a religious experience cause you know, it was, it was a micro or, you know, between, you know, maybe like, a, you know, maybe I had like a, a little stem and cap, you know, mm -hmm. but it was beautiful. I just, I felt totally, you know, just like everything was, was, beautiful and it was incredibly uplifting and comforting and and awesome and i would welcome more but i gotta hit him up that's awesome well I'm, i might have a friend who knows that uh friend too or we'll, nice. we'll talk but what's nice. called for cannabis what is your favorite way of partaking hmm. um i love them all jeremy but my my, my go-to these days is generally I vape herb. So vape I have a, a desktop vape, you know, like similar cat. to a volcano. I have a, it's called an Ariser. Mm. Uh, I think it's, it's a Canadian company. I think, I think the actual model, I forget what it's called, but you know, it's like a volcano. Um, so I fill up the bags and I just uh, sip on those, if you will. Cause I like it. What yeah. what do you think uh, about concentrates edibles? Are they good for the industry? Bad for the industry? Whatever. Yeah. So let me let me separate those two out because I, I think Ooh. edibles. I believe that edibles are a great way to make cannabis more accessible because not everyone smokes, not everyone vapes, but everyone eats and drinks, mm -hmm. and so I think that makes it much more approachable and and user friendly especially for medical patients or or new consumers or um you know people who are who are just intimidated by you know uh, a mind altering substance like cannabis right. um you know like anything there's there's pros and cons there's risks um you know it's easy to over consume with edibles, you know, it's easy to not know. Yeah, I mean, we've all heard those stories, we've maybe experienced ourselves where you have too strong a dose via edible, and then you really regret it, because you could end up in a world of discomfort and, and unpleasantness. Yeah. Um, the concentrates, I think, are more concerning to me, to be honest. Um, I just heard, maybe you'll appreciate this. I was so surprised. I was talking to this rabbi from Israel who works at one of the big yeshivas there. And he was like, you know, when I joined, when I came here 10 years ago, everyone smoked pot. I smoked pot. It was no big deal. It was cool. We would, you know, we would get to Israel. We would find a connect. We would go to yeshiva. It was cool. But now the guys who are coming in from the States 
they're like addicted to pot and some of them are having psychotic breaks and then having to go to rehab for pot. And, you know, we've seen this trend in the last few years and, and we're really worried about it and like, what's going on. And I asked them, I was like, well, are they consuming herb or are they consuming concentrates? And he was like, oh, they're all on vape pens all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and again, not to say that concentrates are necessarily bad or harmful, but I think the, the, here's my, my perspective on it, which is, you know, for most consumers, for the average consumer, if there is such a thing, you know, most people didn't have access to concentrates years ago. You know, for most people, it's relatively new mm -hmm. and you know, because of that and because of the research thing, we don't have a ton of data or evidence on how it affects your endocannabinoid system, your dopamine. It uh, also has system. has like solvents a lot of time, like alcohol. And unfortunately, with uh, with the, the regulation they're doing, I think it's supposed to try and stop this, but it doesn't. Is like you have a lot of tainted products or black market products that look like the real thing or whatever, but uh, the cartel from the Gulf of Mexico is not cleaning the uh, product as well at the end or whatever is needed. And you're probably smoking some chemicals uh, or, or filler agents or um, other things for the flavor and all that, that God knows what those are doing. We don't know what concentrates are doing, but we also don't know at all what all those are doing because we don't even know what's in it. Exactly. You're a hundred percent correct. And I, that's why I personally have always, I, you know, I'm very cautious about consuming concentrates and I, I tell all my friends to, you know, be very skeptical because there's, unless you're getting it from a legal regulated market that requires testing. And even in that case, there's some, you can buy testing. Right. Exactly. So um like buy never, like fake testing that's what i meant exactly right. exactly and so you never really know what you're getting and to your point whatever garbage or chemicals or synthetics or whatever were added you know likely is not meant to go in your lungs right, right. and then the other part of it that people don't understand even though it's it's pretty straightforward is um you know concentrates it's concentrated so whatever, you know, your, whatever is in your source material is getting concentrated. So that includes THC and terpenes and cannabinoids, but that also includes heavy metals, pesticides, or whatever else might've been on that plant that, again, how much transparency does the average consumer have into their product quality? Next to none. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest dangers and risks in the industry and so, you know, also with concentrates, you know, you have to, you have to recognize that the endocannabinoid system is one of the largest regulatory systems in our bodies. And we only really discovered it about 50 years ago. So we don't know a ton about it yet. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I would just caution people like, yeah, you know, enjoy your dabs, enjoy the vape pen. It's convenient, but you know, just like everything in moderation and be mindful of what you're putting in your body because it's not risk-free. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, I, I think that's always my message to people that, you know, yes, cannabis itself is relatively safe compared to a lot of other stuff. And certainly herb won't kill you. Right. And especially if it's safe and clean, you know, it, it's pretty, it, it's not that harmful but it's certainly not risk-free and it's certainly not without any repercussion. Obviously smoking and vaping are not healthy regardless of what you're smoking or vaping. Right. So I am so blessed to be talking to my idol right now. I have a million questions I could probably ask, but we do have to wrap it up at some point. So uh, this will be the last question, probably like a two part question. You could just choose one of the parts, whatever. Where do you see cannabis going in the next five years? Slash, where do you think it should go if it was up to high Mike Z? Slash, when is it going to be federally legalized? 
Oof. Okay. I'll, I'll go backwards there. Uh, federally legalized. I think it really depends who the next president is. If it's Biden. I don't think Biden does it. No? I don't think Biden does it. You think a Republican would do it? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Interesting. I think, I think it's going to be realistically... I think at least another... I don't know. Let, let me think for a little. I think it's at least four years out. Four, four to ten years. Hmm. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and even sense. when it's even when it's federally legalized, it'll probably take two to five years to to figure out. Figure out right? all the policies, make all the yeah. So I I think, you know, we have so many other priorities as a, as a country, as a federal government, and as you saw, like. I, I don't remember if it was earlier this year or late last year. The FDA is not in a rush to get involved and regulate this because it's complicated. It's complex. And so I don't think anyone wants to be responsible and then have to take the blame for messing it up and all this stuff. So I, I my sense is it's going to move slowly. My personal hmm. sense. I could be wrong. But um, where do I think the industry is going to go? I think it's going to be a lot of more of the same, you know. I think everyone's really excited about New York and New Jersey because there's growth there. Um, I'm personally really excited for, you know, maybe five years out, we'll see a lot more international trade and more more countries outside the U.S. Uh, Thailand is, is supposed to be big right now. Where? Thailand seems Thailand, to be like... Yeah, they're, 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 they're blowing up right now for sure. Um, so I think... I think there's still plenty of growth ahead for the foreseeable future. Uh, I think that's not, that's going to come with growing pains though. And I think there's going to be just like there's been the last few years, there's going to be frustration. There's going to be complications. It's going to be messy. Um, but for the most part, I, I, I like to believe that it's positive. Um, and hopefully, you know, some, some good mission driven entrepreneurs will make boatloads of money and then they'll focus their energy and resources on solving other big problems in, in the world and making the world a better place. Cause you know, I, I, I believe that people who are really in cannabis because they're passionate and believe in the plant and, uh, are are doing it because they want to make the world a better place and they want people to have access to plant medicine and they see the potential for hemp to, you know, replace plastic or biofuels or all the stuff that, that is healthy for the planet. So that's what I would love to see is more people embrace and demand hemp plastics or hemp fiber hemp or hemp fuel and, and really you know, take advantage of, of the cannabis or hemp plants ability to remove toxins from the soil or remove or sequester carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. I think, you know, we really need to take care of mother earth a little better. Mm -hmm. And I think cannabis is a big part of that. And also, and also I think, um, you know, mental health, anxiety, suicide, depression, are huge issues, especially for youth. Um, and I think cannabis has a potential to be part of the solution. I think if we are smart as an industry, as regulators, as society, we can use the plants to help solve the problem as opposed to letting it be part of the problem. I completely agree. I um want to know is jack hair the emperor wears no clothes a required reading at your school it should be because i feel like i feel like that's every stoner's uh beginning uh journey to like yo cannabis can solve every single problem that we have started with the emperor wears no clothes and i i think some of them were found to be like no nah, i probably can't do that but a lot of them were true it can do rope concrete food uh like there's a million things that hemp can do and it'd be more sustainable and better than the alternatives. But then I actually, I know I said that was the last question. This question is just a quick answer. Raw, are they guilty? Guilty of what? Whatever they were said guilty last week. 
you know that's being that's Spain, not... they were pro uh, produced in spain or their charity is fake there's medals in their papers uh are you a raw believer or are you against raw i don't have a uh an opinion on it because i don't have enough evidence sounds or like raw is paying you sounds like you're in on it <laughs> and actually the more important question team selena or team Haley? I have no idea what the hell that means. I'm <laughs> on right. Team Jeremy, baby. There we go. That was a great week. Much love from the mushroom. I had a blast. We will definitely have you another time because there's way too much to talk about. You are just a dream to listen to. I could hear you all day. Much love. Love you much more. See you next time. Peace.